Hey everyone, this is Three Questions with Sarah Sorgo. There we go. Sarah just hoping for air horn. Hey, I, I'm actually very blessed. Uh, Sarah Sergo uh, is is actually the chief of staff with, is it Frederick County Public Schools? Am I right? Saying yes, that? it is. Which, which I, I, Sarah told me this, that I think you have the best job ever. And you're I, like, well, I'm sorry. I shouldn't say you have the best job ever because I don't really understand your job, but I know we're going to learn more about it. You have an awesome job title because the only other person I know as chief of staff is like works under the president of the United States, right? Is that, I'm yeah, sure there's other ones. But that's the only one I've ever heard of before. You should have played me a more presidential opening. <laughs> I, I know. I I was going to download the... Dun, 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 dun. I thought that would have been really good. Um, so Sarah is actually the chief of staff uh, of Frederick County Public Schools, but and, which I am like really blessed. I'm really excited. I'm actually joining you all uh, coming up very, very soon. And I know uh, several people from your district that I've connected with over the years. So I'm just really excited to join you all. But Sarah has been uh, a teacher, speech language pathologist, principal, work with principals, has a ton uh, of different, um, you know, work that she does. But she also has a website. You can check it down, uh, lead to support. Uh, it, it is in the URL down below. And um, and full disclosure, we're going to talk about this in another podcast. Uh, we were we always kind of like I always try to brief and learn about my guests before. And she said this term professionally irreverent. And I was like, I don't know what irreverent means. And so she schooled me on this and I love it. So I think it's, I cannot wait to talk more about what that means. And so I was like, that's a little teaser for the next podcast. So you gotta make sure people gotta listen to that one too. Yeah, it's a good good thing when I have the, the host having to look up words I've shared already. <laughs> <laughs> well, I just, yeah, I loved it. I, yeah, I just, I think it's such, it's such a great, it's such a great mentality. It ties beautifully to my work in innovation and, um, I actually, as you said, uh, and I kind of looked it up and you explained it, I'm like, I kind of do that. So well, I try to anyway, I, so I don't want to be irreverent. And if you don't know what that means, you're going to learn about it in a, in a new podcast. So, um, but we're going to start here with the three questions. And so I know um, you work with some really incredible people. I know you had mentioned uh, before we were talking, you also had um, really influential teachers, you know, in your background. So when you think of a teacher that really inspired you, who's someone you think of and why? So, you know, when you when I think about this question, my favorite and most influential people in my career are people who've been with me through multiple seasons of my life. And I've been fortunate that I've had a lot of teachers and people who've mentored me who've sort of seen me through these seasons. So I love this question. I think you'll love this story about my kindergarten teacher, Jeff Martinez. Um, Jeff was my teacher his first year of teaching. And what I learned from Jeff, as he saw me at the very beginning of my educational career, was he sort of embraced this idea that kids are exactly who they are from the very beginning. And sort of this, we have to sort of figure out how to magnify their strengths. So I tell this story that um, on my kindergarten report card or parent conference that he had with my mother, he told my mother that um, what he noticed about me was that my favorite thing to do was to finish my work quickly and then get up and help everybody else finish oh, theirs. Oh, yeah. And I mean that if you, you know, people who know me and work with me are like, oh my gosh, you've been the same person since you were five years old. What I love about that story is not only did Jeff see that at the very beginning of my career, he went on to become a principal himself. Mm -hmm. And then when I became a principal, he was assigned to me as my mentor. So he was with me my first year in school and my first year as a principal and has always sort of influenced me by saying embrace kids and adults where they are and bring out their strengths. So I, I just can't sort of ever reflect on my experience without talking about um, my beloved Jeff Martinez. Well, you know, it's coming. I know you've been waiting for this. A little air, a little air heron for Jeff. I That is such a powerful story, right? And like, you know, thinking about even, even some of the... Even some of the stuff that I, uh, I like, I distinctly remember one student that I worked with as a principal who was a troublemaker and big, big time troublemaker. And I actually um, remember a teacher really struggling with him. I said, the thing that I know I noticed about this kid, this kid can read people amazingly well, and he will like go to where it hurts the most. Like he he was like a manipulator. He could figure stuff out. So this is, I know this sounds horrible. I and mean, a lot of people, if you, if you don't, if you cut me off right now, it's going to sound like a horrible story. I'm like, 
this kid actually has a gift. We have to get him to figure out how to use it for good instead of evil. Cause he was using it for evil at the time, right? Like the ability to like read people, understand who you're connecting with and then actually use it to like, and sometimes even the stuff that we see as a negative, a bad thing, can we actually help kids use it for a beneficial purpose? Sometimes, you know, sometimes the things that we deem as weaknesses, that are a great book, I don't know if you've ever read it, the Malcolm Gladwell, David and Goliath book, talks about mm -hmm. one of the things I remember really sticking out. Um, uh, he said a lot of CEOs actually have dyslexia and mm. the reason they become CEOs, and this is from my memory that, that I remember shared is because they actually have this incredible attention to detail. And so it's actually kind of looking at sometimes the thing that we might say is like a weakness actually could be a strength, right? If we kind of shift people to that way too. So I just love that. I think that's such a powerful, powerful story. So um, what, a, what an amazing story that you actually ended up working, you know, uh, being mentored by him too later in, in life. So just- Yeah, and of... actually, not only did I get to be mentored by him, but I ended up hiring his wife as really? a teacher really? and they, they lived in the community where I was the principal. And so I just, I don't know. I just, and so I got to spend a lot of time just not only with him, but with, with his family. And, um, uh, my last position when I left my principalship was mm. taking on the role of being a principal mentor and coach, which he mm. had done before me. So, uh, he, he's been incredibly influential throughout my career. I love it. I love it. And so that actually like lands beautifully to the next question. So I know you've done a lot of work with principals. I know you've been one, and I know you still continue to do this, you know, in your role, uh, you know, with Frederick County right now. So when you think of a great principal or a great administrator, who's someone you think of and why? And you can't say Jeff, because we can't no. be a Jeff <laughs> podcast. You gotta, you gotta use someone else here too. Well, so, you know, again, same thing. Another person who's been with me throughout so many seasons of my life, and that would be um, Bobby Jasper, Barbara, Bobby Jasper. So Bobby was my very first principal when I was a fresh out of grad school, new speech pathologist. She hired me at one of the elementary schools that I worked at. And again, very quickly sort of mentored me and coached me and, you know, I'm, sort of asked me to dream for more for myself than I would have probably ever dreamed for myself on my own. And a um, couple of years after I'd been at the school, she moved on to a central office position. We stayed in touch. She decided to go back and be a principal again at a different school and brought me with her to help mm. her um, coordinate special education programming and make a program she had full inclusion. And so I got to be her um, coordinator. They eliminated my job after a year and she said, ah, just stay on and be my assistant principal. You're basically that anyway. I stayed with her as an assistant principal. Yeah. Um, so she mentored me into leadership. And the very best part of this story is if you then fast forward past my principalship to then when I became a director of schools, I supervised her the last number of years of her career until she retired. And I'll never forget the time I called her and I said, Bobby, are you sitting down? And she said, are you my boss? <laughs> and I ended up supervising her um, until she retired. And so I just learned so much from her about courage and about bravery and about being irreverent and about innovation um, that really has informed pretty much all of my practice. And so, and we're still still colleagues, mentors, uh, and friends you, today. You, it's, well, that's good because, you know, it could have went a different way after being her boss, so... I, I chose something about you, sir. Give Bobby a little. <laughs> I, I always, I always try to add like a a, a story, you know, yeah. in my own context, something similar. I heard the only thing I could think of, and God, when you said Barbara and you said Bobby, there's a, I don't know if you've ever seen the show Flight of the Concords, but there's an episode where they think they fall in love with the same woman, and they're fighting over her name being Barbara or Brabra, and <laughs> that's the first thing I thought of, and now it's stuck in my head because at the end of the show. She That's said, funny. it's Brabra, B-R-A-H, B-R-A-H. So every time I hear Barbara, I think Brabra. <laughs> that's, that's, that's my contribution to this conversation right now. It, so. ra it rounded out my story beautifully. That's, that's all I got. That's all I got. All right. Uh, I actually, one of the things that really connected with me when we were talking before is really kind of the focus that you have on continuously grow, growing and, and really kind of helping people understand that wherever people are now, that it wasn't just immediate, there is a process. And so there's a ton of learning that happens. And I know you have an, an incredible opportunity, you have an incredible job. I know that it's, it is a unique position. I think it's new, the title for sure is new, 
Um, but you know, people look at that, they hear the title and then like kind of think you were born there. But in reality, there's a lot of stuff that you learn. So when you can go, if you go back and look at your first year of teaching, like when you start in the profession, if you can go back and give yourself some advice, what would that be? So my favorite, um, I love quotes, right? And I love sharing them and and you, drawing inspiration and meaning from them. But I don't know if you, have you ever seen the, uh, is it like a little video from Kara Lawson, who is the head of the Duke women's basketball team. In mm. fact, I actually heard recently that she's also going to be the assistant coach for the women's Olympic basketball team. Yeah. And she did this video that to me, the quote, it's called about hard, doing hard better. So if I could go back and talk to my first year self, I would say none of this is going to get easier, but you are going to learn how to do hard better. And, yeah, I love that. and I just, I, that sort of speaks to me at my deepest level because I think, you know, ed public education and just our work in general is very cyclical. And so I know you were a principal, I was a principal, mm -hmm. you know, we live inside of these sort of academic seasons and we keep thinking, oh, you know, we'll get to the end of the year and the next year will be easier. Or, you know, and I always say like the challenges are always going to be there. The names and the faces may change or the nuances of those challenges may be different, but it's always just going to be hard. Mm -hmm. And so I just think if I wish I'd understood better that like, easy isn't an actual destination. Mm -hmm. And mm -hmm. I think sometimes we keep working and think, well, if I just get to this, and if I just get to that, and if I just get to that, it's going to be easier. And right. I love Kara's quote, it doesn't actually get easier. You just learn how to do hard better. I I absolutely love that because it is, it is always challenging, you know, stuff and you kind of learn different ways to do this. But you know, if it wasn't challenging and purposeful, then at the end of the day, we wouldn't want it to do that. Right. And I, I love that the it's do it's do hard easier. Is that what I'm is that it says, I think it'll never get easier. You learn how to do hard better. I love that. That is such a wonderful way to do this. And so make sure you connect with Sarah. You can actually uh, check out her website and she has a newsletter. You can, you can subscribe to that as well. Um, lead to support. Uh, and it is in the description down below. Sarah, I'm pumped to, to, uh, to talk to you more. I'm actually really excited to talk about professionally irreverent and what that means and kind of like how we got into that conversation. But everyone, thank you so much for listening, Sarah. Thanks so much. I know you're like super busy and that you took time to be on my podcast. I'm really excited to join you and your staff um, very, very soon. So everyone, thanks for listening, Sarah. Thanks, thank you so much for your time.